What's up guys? We got a new bike for the channel. It's from a company called Me Bike. Let's get into it and check it out. As you can tell by looking at this bike, it is very sporty looking. It kind of reminds me of a Super 73. It has that look to it. You got a nice bike rack in the back. Very heavy duty and huge. It also comes with a brake light in the back that actually works when you hit the brakes. And we'll show you that in a little bit. You have dual suspension on this bike, kind of like the Aerial Rider Grizzly. You have a 750 watt rear motor in the back and you got tires on this thing that are 20 by 4 inches wide. You got the Mi Bike logo right here. Just keep in mind this is not a sticker so this is not coming off. It looks like you got standard cranks and standard Welgo pedals. But you do have a torque sensor in here which is very very cool. Now your battery is going to be in this bottom section right here and this is a 48 volt system and it is 20 amp hours and it's a pretty big battery for a bike like this. You got two holes right here so if you do want to put a water bottle or anything like that you can mount something up to those. You have adjustable full suspension in the front with a front fender on here. Coming over here to the suspension this is where you're going to have your preload and this is where you're going to have your compression adjustments. One of my favorite things about this is the headlight. This front headlight is so bright compared to other bikes that I've got in the past. This thing is gorgeous looking. You're going to be able to see everything on the road with this. Now this bike comes with some very nice clean looking BMX handlebars, a lot better than some of these other companies that have been putting some rigid bars on here. These look and fit the bike so nice. Coming down here, you got the logo right at the top, you got your sprocket, you got another logo right here on this side. Keep in mind this is not a sticker, this is not coming off so it's always going to be on the bike. Coming back here, you got a Shimano Altus uh, shifter. And then the cassette is also from Shimano. I do like there is a quick disconnect for the motor just in case you ever have to work on the rear tire and all that stuff. Makes it very, very nice. You just have to take these two zip ties off, disconnect this, pull out this bolt, and then you can just remove the whole entire wheel. Coming underneath the bike right here, underneath the seat, this is where the controller is going to be. It's very nice and tucked away, and it's also in a nice good spot just in case you ever want to change it out or do anything with this bike. And then all the wires come into the frame right here. Very, very nice and clean that you do not see them. It's all integrated inside. Coming up to the top of the bike, sitting on it, this is how it's gonna look. And you're gonna have some leather grips right here. You're gonna have hydraulic brakes. Thank God for hydraulic brakes. The company brand for these are gonna be from Logan. I have used these before on other e-bikes and they are very, very nice. You have your little bell right here. There's no actual horn. So you have this little thing. Sometimes I feel like it gets stuck. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, you just gotta be real rough with it and hit it. And then you have your plus and minus buttons for your uh, speed adjustments, which you have five levels of pedal assist. And then you can hold this, which turns on the screen. It looks very, very nice. I don't have any issues with the screen whatsoever. Uh, it does have a sensor. So if you are in a dark area, it will automatically turn the headlight on but you can automatically turn the headlight off if you want by holding this button down and then the screen does get brighter and then when you do turn the lights back on the screen does dim because it knows it's nighttime. Sliding over to this side you have your Shimano 7 speed right here. Um, I've had no issues with this. This normally comes on a lot of e-bikes now. I do wish the shifter was underneath. It makes it very nice when it's underneath instead of up here but for the most part you're not going to have any issues with that. You might not even be using it too much unless you have a lot of hills you got to climb. And then coming over here obviously hydraulic brakes from Logan again and you're going to have a half throttle right here. So it's not a thumb throttle like some bikes and it's not a full throttle but it is a half throttle. Looking at it from the front above the headlight this is your cable management right here. It's not terrible. Um, I wish they would have put bigger sleeves on this instead of just having this wrapped a little bit right here. I feel like if they would have fully covered it in full, some like full sleeves, I think it would have looked a lot cleaner. These coming up from the top are kind of odd to me. I feel like they should have maybe came through the bottom. 
but um, for the most part, they are a lot cleaner than other bikes I've got. It's just not the cleanest wires I've ever had. These should be extended so you don't have a bunch of these big old bulky cables like showing up right here. They should be behind the headlight hidden. Let's move on to what you get in the boxes when the bike comes. So you get a nice owner's manual. It's very nice and detailed. It has a bunch of information on torque specs and everything you need to know about the bike settings and all that kind of stuff to program it the way you want. It is a very detailed book. They do give you some Allens so you can put this bike together. I ended up using my own, that's why these aren't open. Um, they do give you a wrench, one side's eight, the other side's 10. And then they give you another wrench that's 15 and 15. And then you also get your charger, which I like the fact that they have the name brand on the charger. If you're like me and you collect bikes and you have all these in your garage, most of these chargers are just black with no logo. So you gotta start labeling them with like a label maker or something. So I like the fact that they have the logo on there. And this thing is a 2.8 amp charger. So pretty much that's basically three amps. And if this is a 48, 20 amp hour battery, that means this charger is gonna take about six to seven hours to fully charge this bike if it's completely dead. That's a pretty long time. But I will say that this battery is very massive for this bike size, so you're gonna get a lot of miles out of it. With throttle, you're looking at like 40 to 50 miles, and then without using throttle and using pedal assist, you're looking at like 60 to 80 miles, which is a pretty bold claim, but I do know this is gonna get some good range. I already knew that by looking at the bike because this tube is really thick. I mean, the whole battery is from here all the way down to here, which I'll actually take the battery out right now and show you. So to pop the battery out, we're gonna need these keys, which they conveniently put on the brake cable. So we need to cut this zip tie off and open it up and twist that. And I believe you have to hit this button right underneath. Yeah, so there's a little button right underneath this and the whole battery comes out. And Woo, this is a massive battery, guys. This is a very huge battery. This is almost a thousand watt hours at 960. Once you're done putting the battery back in, make sure you turn this all the way until you hit the lock. If you do not, someone can come up here and push this button and drop your battery out and steal it. Now you can charge the battery off the bike if you wanna take it inside, but if you wanna charge it with it on the bike, this is where your charging port's gonna be. It is very nice and hard to get off, which is good for water. Um, and it's gonna be right in this little spot right here. All right, so I'm gonna go ride the bike. Let's get on it and let's go test out all the modes and see how it is. And let's see how this torque sensor is also that they have on this bike, which is very unique. A lot of bikes don't have torque sensors. So uh, let's go check it out get on the road. I wanna let you guys know before we actually started riding that this bike does have an app that you can hook up with Bluetooth. So you hit the power button, then you come in here and you basically scan this and it sets up your whole new bike. And there we go, it says my average speed, my cycling time, my max speed, uh, my odometer, what's on there right now. I can turn the lights on and off and it tells me my battery percentage on here and you can start your own trip if you want, but I gotta make an account. So that's kind of cool, it comes with an app. All right, so with this bike having a torque sensor and all that, you can be in pedal assist number one to five. It's pretty much gonna go as fast as how hard you pedal. So I'm in zero right now, so obviously I have nothing. I have no throttle or nothing. Let's go into one, and you'll see that uh, it's gonna be your slowest pickup speed. So it's not gonna give you much power to get up to speed. This is gonna give you your longest range and all that stuff. But I wanted to show you that the more I pedal, like the harder I actually start pedaling this bike, we're at 12 miles per hour, at 13 miles per hour, 14. It will keep going. It's just how much power it's gonna give you out of the hole. So this is gonna save all your battery life possible. And then if we move it up to say five, which it goes into the red, it's kind of cool as the screen turns red. Now I don't have to pedal as hard and the motor kicks in, the power kicks in a lot easier. For this trip mostly, we're gonna be using throttle only. I wanna see what our top speed is. We are at 24.5 miles per hour. All right, we got a longer straightaway. Let's see if we can hit 25 plus miles per hour. I also did go into the settings of this bike and I unlocked all the mile per hour that you can get out of it. I think I put it at like 99 kilometers per hour. So we're not limited at all. So however fast this bike can go is how fast it can go. Yeah, I'm only seeing about 24. I think I briefly saw 25 pop up for a second, but it's looking like this bike is doing about 24 to 25 miles per hour. 
and uh, I did air these tires up to about 28 PSI. You're gonna wanna make sure to air these up if you do order this bike because they came at nine PSI when I got it. One thing that's nice about this bike, it turns very, very well. I don't have any issues with it. Now it doesn't turn as good as a bike that's on like some skinny tires. You just gotta put a little bit of effort in the turning, but it still feels nice and comfortable. I have no complaints. I will say, hands down, this is probably the most comfortable bike I have ever sat on and drove down the street without putting any type of modifications into it. 100%. This bike is absolutely so comfortable. I don't know what this seat is made out of. I have no idea. I don't know if it's like a memory foam or something, but it is just, oh my God, it is so plush and nice. So I want to do a uh, speed test real quick. It's going to be pretty much zero to 24 or 25 miles an hour. So let's uh, do a little test right now. One, two, three, go. Twenty one, twenty two, twenty three. We're about to run out of road here. Twenty four. <laughs> it's still going, but it, we're running out of road. Ah, uh, yeah, we only hit twenty four. This bike seems like it hits twenty in no time, and then all the speed after that, twenty one to twenty five, it's very, very, very slow. Overall, I'm having a lot of fun with this bike. It's very comfortable. It's not as comfortable to pedal. And the reason why is because this seat is so wide right here that my uh, legs are resting up against this. So when I pedal, I feel my, my legs rubbing up against that. So it's actually a little bit too wide for me. Maybe it's gonna fit other people a little bit better. But if you're not pedaling and I'm just using throttle only, it is so, so comfortable. Not a single complaint on that. This is probably the best bike I've ever been on. Here's one con that I noticed on the bike. So let's just say you're moving in your garage or you're doing something with it and uh, you're moving the bike. The pedals come in contact with the kickstand. I'm not a big fan of that. So I'm already starting to damage my kickstand a little bit. Um, I don't know if that's just because of where they wanted to put the kickstand. It's easier to put it there. I feel like if they would have put it a little bit farther back, they would have avoided that issue because it's barely hitting. So if it was like right here, it would have never been a problem. But that's just something I noticed. So if that's something you care about, then, you know, there you go. Just so you know. Let's see how it is off here. If it's this comfortable on the road, I'm expecting it to be very comfortable. Oh my God, man. This thing is absolutely like, oh my God, it's a dream. This feels close to how my Suron feels. You absolutely just feel nothing. Man, this bike is smooth, guys. I mean, I'm telling you right now, this thing, is so smooth i don't understand how the aerial rider grizzly had dual suspension in the back and it wasn't this comfortable this has dual suspension in the back and it is hella hella comfortable so i want to give you guys an update right now on where the bike's at so it is at 96 percent and ever since i charged it i now have 6.4 miles on the bike i'm not exactly sure how accurate that range is if it's reading my miles correctly I didn't change like any of the wheel diameter speed or anything like that. For, okay, now saying 95%. That is insane for six miles or six and a half miles. Absolutely insane. Hey, we're hitting 25 miles per hour now, solid. So this bike is coming around. Probably just need to be broken in a little bit. One thing I'm noticing that a lot of people probably aren't gonna notice or even mention is riding on these white lines. The way this tire tread is designed, since these white lines have a little bit of a, they have like a raised up part of the road because of the paint, you can absolutely feel the tire trying to figure out where to go. Like it's trying to force you to get off of it. You can feel it kind of sliding back and forth because it wants to get off that ridge. It's just the way these uh, 
patterns of the tread are which i don't even think i mentioned but these tires do have a reflective ring around them all right we need to test out the brakes so that's something we're gonna work on right now all right we're at 24 miles per hour i'm gonna go off this pole right here all right we slid dang look at that mark <laughs> that mark all the way over here. So I started with the front of the bike. So that's why the skid mark is actually behind the pole because it went off the rear tire because the rear tire was sliding all over the place. But uh, not bad at all. That's one good thing about hydraulic brakes. Gotta love them. They're so nice and firm. They work very good. No issues with that. <laughs> I always think it's funny when uh, bike companies put like a little bell like this on here. I mean, it's gonna grab someone's attention. Not that they have their windows like up or anything. Your cars aren't going to hear you, especially with their music going and stuff. An actual horn, people are going to hear that, but no one's going to hear that thing. All right, so we have went eight miles now, and we are at 89%. Now, one thing you guys should know is that a lot of bike companies normally have their uh, battery percentage go off of voltage. So what happens is when you hit the throttle, it will say you're down to like 50% because it's the voltage sag of it going down under power. But this looks like it goes off of like resting voltage. And I kind of like that because it doesn't give you any false readings where it's like, oh my God, it's 50% and then you let off and it goes back up to 80%. And you're like, oh, I got 80% left. So a lot of people are gonna like that over the other method that other companies have been doing. I like this method. It's a lot better. The other way is just too complicated. I wanna do some more braking tests. It's fun. <laughs> oh my god these brakes are instant absolutely instant all right here's some more stuff that you guys need to understand is that this is a very very tall bike to the point where i can barely flat foot it i'm actually i feel more comfortable on my tippy toes almost because this bike sits very high it sits higher than my super 73 does so if you can barely get on a Super 73, they make another bike like this and it's a step-through design. The step-through design, you could already tell what it is because it's white. Now, I like the black version. I wish that the white one came in this model too, but it doesn't. So on their website, it is saying that this is optimized for riders 160 to 195 centimeters tall. I'm not exactly sure how that is in feet, but, uh, it kind of gives you an idea. So if you feel like this bike might be a little bit too tall for you, just look into the step through design and it will fit people that are a little bit shorter. Another thing too, I wanted to mention that this bike is pretty heavy. It is 72 pounds. It is pretty much the same weight as the Super 73 RX, which I think that weighs about 75 to 80 pounds. And um, you have a max payload that you can sit on this bike at 275 pounds. So not too bad. So it holds a decent amount of weight. And you do have dual suspension in the back. So I think it's gonna be comfortable for a lot of people. I feel like if you want comfort over being super fast and you want a legal bike that's within California limits of 750 watts, which this thing is, it does have a peak of a thousand, but for the most part, it's 750 watts. It doesn't pick up as fast as a lot of other bikes that I've been on. Even bikes that look like mountain bikes that are a lot smaller with small tires and everything like that. That's because those bikes weigh like 50 to 60 pounds and they might have a 500 to 750 watt motor, but they take off like crazy just because of the weight difference. But I will say that those bikes compared to this being a saddle seat, this thing is so perfect and comfortable to sit on. So if you're more in the comfort, you can't go wrong with this thing. But we haven't even gotten to the price yet, folks. So uh, that's gonna be the heavy hitter right here. And I did wait till the end of the video because it's a pretty hard one. Um, the bike is $22 to $2,300, and that is a lot of money. It's not as expensive as a Super 73. Very, very similar, just slightly less specs. Super 73 is going to give you a 1,200 watt motor. This is going to give you a 750 watt motor. Um, I feel like this was actually more comfortable than my Super 73 RX, just riding it right out of the box until I replace the seat on the Super 73, then it felt a lot better. But out of the box with no adjustments to suspension or anything like that, this thing feels awesome. The price of this bike is really gonna depend on if it's something that you wanna spend your hard earned money on. 
personally, if you asked me, which I know you guys are gonna ask me, I feel like it should be priced at about $2,000. I mean, it's a little bit over that, so it's not too far out of reach. Cause you gotta think about, you got hydraulic brakes. You got a beefy headlight. A lot of people upgrade their bikes to have a headlight like this and you already get one out of the box. You don't get that cheap, flimsy looking headlight that's like this tiny or so and it doesn't light up anything. Which we'll do another video on this when I go to work and we'll take it at nighttime and all that stuff and kind of show you the bike. Um, it comes with a rear light. The rear light actually works with the brake levers, with both of them. Um, it doesn't get brighter, it just flashes. So as you hit the brakes, it just stays static and then it just flashes like that. But still, what do you get in other bikes? You don't get a rear brake light like that. You don't get the headlight. You don't get front suspension or back suspension. You might get front suspension, but not the back. I think it's priced very well. It's just up there. But I think if it was $2,000, I would have said they knocked it out of the park and it's like 100% like you can buy it with confidence knowing you got a very good deal. But definitely subscribe to this channel, guys. Um, I also have a link in the description which is gonna have an affiliate link with a discount code. So you guys actually can save some money on this bike and bring it down, I think like, I think it's like 50 bucks. All right, before we wrap up this video, let's go over the pros and cons on why you should think about maybe picking this bike up. Now, it is the most comfortable bike I have ever been on, completely stock with no modifications whatsoever. The headlight, this is a big plus on this bike. Look, you got the daytime running lights. Then you have the really, really bright light in the front once you actually turn the headlight on. And you have the brake light in the back, which is a static light. But then when you hit it, it flashes. That's a very good feature that bikes don't include. You got dual suspension in the back. And the biggest thing that's a plus on this bike is the battery. The battery is a 20 amp hour battery. That is a fantastic battery for this size of bike. I think that is awesome. The only real bad cons I have about this bike are the grips. I'm not a big fan of the grips. I'm not a big fan of the half thumb throttle because over time, depending on your hand size, your hands start hurting as you're uh, turning the, the throttle. So that's something I'm not a big fan of. I'm not really a big fan of this being on the top, but that's just my own preference. The biggest thing I'm not a fan of is this. I don't like bells like this. I feel like every bike should have some type of a horn, but if you have the cash to spend and you want a discount on it, my link will be down in the description if you wanna go check it out. Go over to the website, just look at them. If you're a shorter person, look at the step through design, and if you're a taller person, look at this design because this is comfortable as heck. See you guys in the next one. Peace out. Later, guys.